December 12th, 2023, meeting of the select board. The order at yeah, about 6 10. Give or take a few minutes. Welcome, everybody. Are there any changes to the agenda for public comment? Or no, everybody's here. Okay. We're getting the exciting stuff the budgets. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, come on, come on up. <laughs> How are you, Bob? Uh, I don't know if everybody knows Jeff Johansson, executive director of North Carolina Tech. Therefore, roll up multiple locations. I'm Savannah. Susan. <clears throat> Justin. Justin. Mason. Okay. So, what can we do for you? Well, probably want money, right? <laughs> well, I'll give you. We presented our budget to you. Yeah. Like yeah. you see now, it's just yeah. slightly over a four percent increase from last year. Um, the past year that you're presently in, we asked for a three percent increase, even though inflation was roughly eleven to twelve percent. This year, inflation looks like it's about four percent. Um, and we're asking for roughly just barely over four percent increase. Uh, I'll go through and tell you why, what the reasons are and what you're getting for that 4%. Last year, as we discussed earlier, we added a second crew evenings initially for three times, three nights a week. We ended up doing it for four nights a week. And this coming year, we want to add the second crew for the final three nights a week. One of the reasons for doing that is we have made um, it mandatory that we keep, if at all possible, to keep our 911 crew in the area all the time. Before we were doing some transfers at a company as they requested, and we didn't have any required mutual aid, and we were receiving too much mutual aid, and we were getting some complaints. So that 911 crew was kept in the area. And we've reduced their mutual aid received from around 80 to 90 a year to less than 20. Mm -hmm. uh, so done a very good job there. But we did have to turn down some transfers. And the transfers is where we are profitable enough to reduce the impact of taxpayers. And so that's why we want to have that second crew so we can keep Copley happy. So we're not calling in ambulance services from elsewhere and potentially taking more business. So that's one of the things we want to do with the additional money. Um, the other thing, uh, pay raises. We, you probably have heard in the news, Hardwick and Cambridge have gone through some difficult times. The answer for difficult times in this industry is more money. And when they throw more money at our present employees and future employees, we have to compete. So we have to have pay rates. I was going to say, right, tell anybody that, right? That, that's for EMTs as well as paramedics. The good news, um, we received a 140000 plus grant for education. So we have five of our present members going to paramedic school. It's a two-year process. Um, so we've got some of our older members that started with us 20-odd years ago here that will be retiring. And next five to 10 years, so we need young paramedics. Yep. So we have three from a Jonathan station that are going to be entering paramedic school. Um, again, it's a two-year process, but the timing will be good because they'll get those experienced people working with them, training them in the field afterwards. Yeah, what kind of schedule is it for them going to school for two years? Well, it's done um, online. Okay. It's it makes such a difference to getting people to be able to do this stuff. Yeah. yeah. Well, Jeff can give you the details. I've got them in this file. Yeah, paper. So this, this is the hybrid program. Yeah. So it's out of Massachusetts. So they'll do um, online, which is a live portion online. So yep. they have to sit yeah. like, for, I think it's two classes a week, um, four hours. And if they miss it, if they were for family, they have, it's recorded and they have one week to make up that class and watch it. After that, they have to go down to the program for 10 days and do skill, all their skills hand-on portion. Then once they pass that, then they have to do their hospital and ride time, um, which is another 500 plus hours. So it comes out the 18 hours of classroom and then 
almost another year of field study. It's a very intense program, but they have like a 90% pass rating. Um, Which location is that in Massachusetts? Yeah, it's out of Westwood, Bridgewater, Massachusetts. Yeah. National Training Center? Yeah. And so we've been asked if um, we can contract with the employee to stay with us for X amount of time afterwards, but because mm -hmm. it's federal money and state money, we cannot do that. But, but what we can do, and Jeff has done, is kind of handpick the ones that we know are going to be staying with us, the ones that are from the area. The other thing we do have a paramedic. Um, I talked to him today. He's just getting ready to graduate from um, Vermont Tech. Um, not Vermont, no. And Rella and Randolph. Yeah. Has yeah. been a paramedic program yeah. there. And so he is from Troy, isn't he? Yeah. And so again, that's the money that's on their own. And those are the type of people who want to become paramedics. Yeah. Um we can't make it mandatory they stay for three to five years, but what we have worked out, there's incidentals involved. They're going to be spending time in Massachusetts, hotel bills, meals, travels. We can re reimburse them for them over a three-year period. And so we know they're going to stay for three years. And we found if we keep somebody for two or three years, they're not going anywhere. We're fully staffed in the Johnson Station. As a matter of fact, it seems like people are knocking down the walls to work on them, to work there. Wow. And even the so first time since I've been here in 16 wow. years that say, yeah. we've been oh. really good, really well staffed. We've got people from leaving other services coming to them. So. So we even have flight medics from Alaska coming down and working for us for a week every three weeks or so. Yeah. Huh. So. Well, if you create a supportive work environment, money's important, but the environment that you create that folks work in when they feel supported, yeah. um, that tends to keep folks around. One of the things I found when we started, um, people worked with the same crews 48 hours a week. Mm -hmm. And that's who they knew. And we really tried to change that culture. And yesterday at Johnson Station had a um, Christmas party, or not yesterday, last week. Yeah. And only one employee didn't attend, and that was because he was at a son's, his son's event. And the workers there are very close um, and love working there. And it's so nice to see if it's complete right. change. Right. The other thing, Ron, I don't know if he's on here or not, but he asked, <laughs> we had some for, some formulas in our budget on how we split things up. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we do, we have 10 ambulances. Um, we have five in Newport, three in Johnson, mm -hmm. and one each in Troy and Morgan. And the ones we use in Newport and Johnson, the mileage on those is amazing because of transports. And so what we're doing now is we're, I mean, an ambulance now lasts about every five years. So we are now rotating them. So we keep the mileage down on all of them to make sure they're gonna last with minimal expense over a five year period. And so NEMS is now responsible for 30% of the payments of L10 and any, um, because we don't know where they're going to be working. John, uh, Newport covers 50% of costs. The other two locations, 10%, because of, that's where the ambulance is their station. Okay. And then administrative cost, um, it's interesting. We Jeff kept track of his time spent um, in administration between the four um, locations. And naturally, those that we do transports with, he spends more time with. So Newport... Um, we are, they cover 46% of our administrative cost. Johnson, 34%, Troy and Morgan, 10% each. And so that's sal administrative salaries, expenses are being dealt that way. So instead of it's a great deal, so for roughly a third, the administrative, you're getting full-time administrator for a third of the cost if you had to pay for one just for the station. Right, right. So that helps out a lot. We actually ordered 10 ambulances this year. Um, 
getting two a year for five years, <laughs> for, um, for five years, and they're holding the price on the boxes for us. Wow. Yeah. So we we're able to negotiate that. Of course, if it takes so long, again, we're finding the things we ordered. It's, it's Fire been, the order. It's been yeah, we're going 18 to months to uh, order a truck. Years, anyway. so, yeah. right. so we ordered them ahead of time. And what they did is they, uh, the company that builds the boxes, guaranteed the prices, locked the prices in for the next five years. The only increase we will ever have will be the fluctuation of the chassis, which they can't, you know, do anything on what Ford or Chevy charges them. But they'll build the boxes and hold them and they guarantee the prices what they quoted us now so we may gain a little bit in five years because i'm sure those prices will have gone up yeah they go up as much as they did the last five years oh. and when we did our budget this year um we didn't really pay any attention to the administrative costs and everything and our budgets just happened to come out whereas NEMS um, is covering 34% administrative budget, but our total budget in Johnson is 33.2% of Newport's total budget. Um, Newport covers 46% um, administrative and their total budget is 45.6% of next year's total budget for Newport Ambulance. So we didn't look at it, but it came out that close. Yeah. It's pretty amazing. We are for this year. I mean, I told you we are adding that other crew. Oh, our insurance costs, again, as you are finding out, was a huge part of our increase. Also, there's a new line item um, that you've never seen before, property taxes. Uh, Johnson Select Board finally realized that if they charge us property tax, they only have to pay roughly 46% of it, whereas now they're covering all of it. Um, so that's a new, total budget of $7,803. So total for the all five towns, we had an increase of 15,300. Half of that increase is that property tax. So we we're pretty pleased with that. Um, so the rest is basically salaries and insurance is where we really got hit. Nothing we can do about that. What do you pay your folks? I'm just curious. As to... So it goes anywhere from $18 to um, 28, 29 dollars. Um, which is really hard, you know, you pay an EMT, you know, they start at $18. So it was in Price Chopper and McDonald's mm -hmm. and everything. And yep. Yeah, so we yeah. raise them a dollar or two and they, those guys follow. And the hospitals now are short nurses. So what they're doing is they found that a paramedic is equivalent to a nurse and they can run off the doctor's license because that's what we do in the field. So now they're, uh, you know, hospitals have deeper pockets than... Yep. We do, and we're competing with hospitals and urgent cares for our staff. So um, so what we're doing with Hyde Park, well, our total increase in the town appropriations to the five towns is 15,300. We divide this by the um, 2,020 census. And so Hyde Park's increase is $5,194. And that was for you guys. It's a great investment. Well, thank you. We also, for the largest, by landmass, we're the largest service in the state of Vermont. And we expect we're going to be growing another 180 square miles. Um, the volcano the is erupting topic. in your. <laughs> uh, no, we're, um, looked, looks like we're going to end up with five of the ends, five of the six grants and gores <laughs> in the scheme, which means an additional. 60 residents, yeah. but a lot of snow wheelers and a lot of they have 189 dams. square miles and yeah. have less than 60 yeah. residents there. But it gives us a little bit of money and three or four calls a year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, and, but, and it gives them coverage. Right. And right now their coverage is out of New Hampshire and we're much closer in our Morgan station. Yeah. Right. The other good news is for the first time we are billing for some calls that are non-transport. Um, we are, if we do a physical assessment, we are getting paid by Medicaid, if they're a Medicaid patient, for doing that assessment without transporting. It's like $108 a call, but um, yeah, yeah, we just, I got this information today. Right now, um, 
in NAMS has done 1,670 calls so far this year. 1,281 of those are billable, so only 77% are billable. Okay. Newport, 76% is billable. Morgan is 66% and Troy is 63%. They are lower because we only do 911 calls there. The others are slightly higher because our transport numbers are in there. So, and even car accidents, um, we have found a way that we can build car insurances for physical assessments. Yep. And so we don't get paid by every company, but we haven't figured that into our budget because we really have no history of how much we right, can receive, right. yeah. but it hopefully will help a little in the future. Yeah. And yeah. right now Medicaid is paying that. Um, Medicare is not. And Peter Welch, Bernie Sanders, and Becca Bullent are sponsoring a bill that um, Medicare follows suit. Yeah. So that would be huge for us. Yeah. Maybe this would be a good question. Time to ask the question I've got. It's kind of a come to me here a couple of weeks ago from a taxpayer. And I don't know if we've had much of this in this area in High Park about drug overdose. Now, what happens if you get called to a drug overdose? Who pays for that? I, I said, I think that the taxpayers pay for it, right? Because if, so if we transport somebody, so if we go, we transport them, um, then their insurance. Pay but for if it. they don't yeah. have insurance, uh, if they don't have insurance. We um, can't bill them. We don't. Right, the taxpayers, and that's why. Yeah, the reason you, um, we are charged as taxpayers, property taxpayers for ambulance service, is because we are not reimbursed properly by the insurance companies. Would you say that one more time so they can hear it? <laughs> e EMS. No, I'm just. Yeah, EMS uh, is the most underfunded. Um, you know, if you watch the news, you know, Essex, you know, Morrisville, all these agencies yep. have been on the headline. EMS is the most underfunded. The cost of readiness is, you know, we sit there and you pay, you know, we have pay our employee, whether it's calls or not. And then if we have a 911 call, you know, Medicaid pays penny on the dollar, you know, for we'll get a $200, you know, bill. I mean, that's what we'll get reimbursed. Um and the medical supplies, you know, sometimes some of the equipment costs you, uh, you know, three, four hundred dollars. So sometimes you lose money. Um, you know, we fought for a long time to get that treat no transport because the state makes us go. You know, if a medical arm is pulled, someone falls down, we have to go. We can't say no. We go, we assess them. You know, we'll put bandages, cold them, you know, check them out, do their vitals. Then the state requires that we come back and write a whole run report on that. So that's hours, sometimes, you know, a couple hours that we don't get any reimbursement for that. Right. So they did say, hey, what, what do we come up with? 108 is what they determined was the fair amount. I mean, it's that's still- It's better than nothing. It's better than it nothing. It doesn't cover the cost. It is, right. So if they look at it, EMS is still the most underfunded. Might cost pay for the fuel. Right. <laughs> yeah. you know. well, but I, I thank right. you because I, I kind of answered that question yeah. right in a way. Right. Yeah. But he was concerned about the area. That's yeah. the re right, the reason you pay for it is in your town budget yeah. is because it's underfunded yeah. everywhere else. Right. And what else do I want to say here? So the car insurance is oh and there will be a slight increase. There's a very slight increase in Medicare and Medicaid pay on increases for 2024, right. two point something percent. Yeah. Um, but not a lot of money there. Yeah, so 2% on, you know, $200. So it's going to go up, you know, less than $20. Yeah. Did you say just Johnson did 1,600 calls this year? NEMS. NEMS. Yeah, the, whole, the Johnson station. Yeah. Yes. Where is that? 1,600. Do you guys get a lot of calls to the state college down here? It goes in spurts. You know, we'll have a, you know, a couple sometimes, and we won't go for a while. Um, it's not a huge amount. That's what we have found, though. Um, a lot of times we're called because somebody's doing something that they shouldn't have been, but we don't get proper names. No, I, yeah. I hear you. But it's not nearly as many calls as I anticipated that it would be when we started in that area. That's good. I think Roger's finding that he's getting a few more calls than he used to. 
Um, no, does the state don't reimburse any calls up there, probably? No, that would be their personal insurance. So if they have insurance, and if not, then we can chase it. Yeah. Well, a, lot of, a lot of the schools require that you have insurance. Yeah. Exactly. So they aren't exposed. Well, that new law they put in effect a few years ago for the kids staying on their parents till they were like 25. Well, that was, yeah, yeah that, that's that. But it's still, they've been a long time. Colleges, higher education as one of their requirements with yours is, and they'll, they'll line you up with insurance policies again so that you get called and something's happened it's not the bill's not coming back on the coverage yeah but if they don't they don't want mom and dad to know right. i will know <laughs> <laughs> but that's there what, have been a lot higher price to pay <laughs> yeah, sure. so again we try just to um we are at we're asking for 42 dollars and 85 cents per capita in these five towns there's a neighboring service. Um, they haven't finalized their budget yet, but their proposed budget is over $140 per capita. So we're doing the best we can. Good. Yeah, yeah. You've all, you have always been very- Sounds good. So at this point, keep it down. Um, for those of you who haven't been around that long, we this goes into your regular budget. After town meeting, we'll be back, and we have to have a contract signed due to the yes. auditors for by all five towns. So we'll mail you contracts, but I have one of us will come in to get a contract, and we'll go to each by the town. Yes, I remember that part. And we will be at the end of the year. We'll be sending you our year-end um, budget comparison for um, 2023, and. That will be on a sheet with a proposed budget actual and then the proposed yeah. budget that we have. We will be sending the um, letter to the towns that go into the town report. And we'll be sending a letter to the select board that will explain what we're up to this year, um, why we're having increases, where the increase is coming from, call volumes and what we, and as far as stuff, as far as being able to bill for the non-transports and stuff. So if there are any questions at town meeting, hopefully you'll have the answers right there with you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Terrific. Thank you very much. I appreciate and, all you do, really. Yeah, the, the key, um, a lot of people ask with that billing of no transports, the patient never gets a bill. So we'll bill Medicaid for that. But if, if you know the patient doesn't have Medicaid or doesn't we still do those transports. I mean, we still do those lift assists, those assessments with no bill. I know in some of the other towns, they were like, oh, so the grandmother doesn't, is on Medicare. She's going to get a bill every single day. I said, no, we still don't charge for lift assists. This is just something to supplement. Probably that Medicare takes, takes a while to get it, but they're probably pretty good paying it. Okay? Um, we usually within 30 days. Yeah. The yeah. main thing with them is getting the paperwork done. Yeah, right. right. The billing yeah. because they see Medicare. Um, First with a third party to actually do their billing and receivables, and they do everything they can not to pay a bill. And so the people in our billing office are constantly making Paper sure it's correct, and correct. the key is getting the right information. Insurance companies like that. that. That's a lot of the cost of healthcare. Yeah. 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 They, they they've got so many people working for them. So, okay. Okay. oh, unbelievable. And that's what we have a very good um, crew um, working in the billing offices. Good. They do an excellent job. And there are a lot of animal services that lose out on a lot of money because sure. they don't chase it. Yep. You yep. have to chase it. Yep. Otherwise, yep. the taxpayers pay me. Yes. Great. Thank you. Great. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Yeah, that's Yeah, that's me. Yes, sir. I've been on. I just wanted to let you know I was here. I didn't want to interrupt. Yeah. Lucy and Mark, Mark. Yeah. I got a text from Ron about that. Okay. He said he is unavailable. Um, there's a PC meeting. Melanie is monitoring this meeting if needed. We spoke with Mark. Say on highway budget, 
agenda item, and he only provided a request to increase paving to the $300,000 annual goal, which would be hard to do. <laughs> but, that's right. But he did his job and asked for it. Okay. Um, looking for you guys. You guys are here for the Listeners, no. we're here for Jessica. We're here for Jessica. Who else to be here? Yeah, I'm not there. We're just I find myself asking questions like, "What am I asking that?" Because you know, you know, the knows, he knows the answers. All right, let me see. The um, LEDC Chamber of Commerce appropriation. I saw an email from him regarding that. Of, I believe was a two hundred dollar increase and combined into one appropriation instead of two different ones. Right. Here's the the um with LEDC and and it was somebody else LEDC and the planning commission that the that the, not here the regional planning commission that those really are, you know we've had them listed and those are. Really, basically, fees that you pay you part of them as opposed to, um, you know, like just if the dog comes in and wants mm -hmm. some money or you mm -hmm. know, some wheels wants mm -hmm. money. Yeah, I bought community service, right? And, <laughs> and, and the economic development folks and the regional planning commission really aren't that kind of thing. They're sort of really regular fees that you pay for your services. Yep. So we're saying that we should just, you know, you're going to do it. We should, they should be pulled from that page of 20 or 25 or whoever we give it to. And when they have an increase, it doesn't, it's not as though it's okay we're going to pay it or not. If your insurance cost goes up, I guess you can argue if you're going to pay it or not, but you know, you're going to, you're going to pay it. So we're just looking at moving those over. Yeah. Right now with, with, um, LEDC, they've uh, they've taken over the chamber services, whatever, so that they have now incorporate. So just saying, all right, we we'll just move it and do that as we as we have all of these paid. We're basically moving them where they are, and we're, and we're picking up all the chamber stuff and then issuing two hundred dollars a year, which is and is not an additional two hundred a year. It's changed. Allocating from two hundred, adding yeah, because right now it's two thousand two hundred, so it'd be twenty two hundred and zero. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. It's just it's just merging the two numbers. I don't know if we need to. I think that's just letting us know what's happening with it. Yeah, I think address it when you do the final budget yeah. type of thing. Okay. Oh, now we get the exciting blister stuff. Chris is here. Hey, Krista. Oh. I'm right here. Hello, everybody. <laughs> okay, so uh, Krista, me and the officer are already doing something. Wanted because there's a, there's an opening, and uh, wanted to know if we wanted to appoint her as a lister. The term would go until um, town meeting day, and I said the question is, <laughs> yeah, of course we would. Pointer. Yeah, he said <laughs> exactly. So we need a motion to appoint Krista to fill the vacant position. So moved. I'll second it. Okay, we got that, Chas? Yep. Okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 If Krista said she's opposed now, it's too late. <laughs> so, I'm not opposed. <laughs> now, the Hyde Park Lister's compensation. Now it's not two board members in vacancy. Now we have three. How do we pay listers by an hour or stipend? That's, that's, what you're that's all we need to figure out, Chas. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> what we've been doing for this year is keeping track of our hours, okay, and then turning them in twice a year. 
But we didn't, even though we that's started in March, we didn't really we didn't do anything until June because that's the way you guys want to get paid anyway by the hour. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's kind of a pain. You have to keep track of the hours. We Justin gave us three options. Um, one was like a salary, a year, that's kind of thing. And the other was kind of a little bit of both. But we, you just never know what we're doing. What do you what do you want to do? Yeah, when they say an hour, I think is good. Well, the one that we keep track for hours. I don't think I take her. Now, let's not. I'll make a motion. Can I go to the, you guys, can I go to the microphone? Because I can't hear them. Sorry. I can't really hear Deanna very well. Can you go to the microphone? I'm sorry. Thank you. We were just talking about. That's a good point, Chas. Is it? <laughs> we were just talking about what. How we get paid and how yeah. do we want to get paid? Okay. They want to get paid by the hour, so yeah. I'll make a motion that. Oh, they do want to get paid by the hour. Oh, okay. May I? Well, I just anybody, like, What's that? Good point. By seconds, that um, the issue with the hourly right now with Krista is she already at forty hours a week. So how to manage that if she's going to have to take away from our assistant hours to do this or do a stipend? So that way she doesn't have to keep track of her hours. How many hours a week does Krista put in during the week? I mean, for that. For listeners, she hasn't started yet. How much? Do you, how many hours do you normally? Just yeah. it can, We can go from getting 10 hours, 15 hours a week to not getting anything for a month. You know, it's just so, so it's all about predictable. Yeah. 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 We're I mean, probably not very smart and taking and not taking the stipend. I know. I but know. it just but it seems to be the fair way of I mean, this is also new for you guys and right. for us because you right. haven't had a lister for so long. That... Right. So Let's what just was doing with this way for a year? Okay, wait, wait. Let me have one person time stretching so Chas can hear. So since you've been keeping track of your hours, how many hours does it look like it's been? Let me check because I don't want to keep track of it. She does. She keeps track of me. <laughs> Where's my phone? I want to say it. What was the budget? Like, what was the Lister's budget prior to me resigning? Anybody have a clue? I have no Tell idea. Tell me what happened to my phone. I just got it here. Is it in your front pocket in your shirt? Yes. Yeah, yeah, in your front pocket. Yeah, in your like, so kangaroo yeah. pocket. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sorry. Because I was just curious because Julie, Julie Rollator did all of the major Lister stuff. Right. Which now we're paying Justin to do that as a an assessor. So basically, his fee will come out of the Lister budget, right? Yeah. So oh, when you guys had the budget last year, and you had Justin in there, and you had Terry at sixty five dollars an hour, that had to have been pretty pricey. The budget. So I can't believe you guys would be over that. Exactly. Well, we'd be happy to take sixty-five dollars now. I would not so, argue with that at all. Oh, no, that'd be awesome. We all because we we decided with Justin's help because he's he's doing a super job, and he asked about Terry coming back to do things. We didn't feel we needed her because yep. what Leslie and I are doing in the field to help Justin, and what we know with the history of Hyde Park, there I don't see any reason for her to be involved unless. It's an email or some question that Justin said she has kindly offered to take emails yes. and phone calls and not charge a tax. And not charge. Yes. Okay. So she's I'm good at surprised at that. But um, yeah. And so I can't between her much experience as a lister and my experience as a realtor, realtor we should not have too many problems. Right. I've got, I'm just trying to figure out what we come up with for a number. Right. Well, right, right now we're at about 20 hours. That's it for the last six months. Okay. And I, mean, I, I did a months? breakdown yeah. of approximate. So an average of one hour meeting per month. So 12 hours per year, six hours of grievances per year, three hours per year to review the changes, one hour per year to launch a grand list, plus two additional hours per week in the month of March, May, mm -hmm in June and 18 hours for spring inspections and 16 hours for fall inspections. So what's that total hours, roughly? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're working on Thursday. Are we working on Thursday? Last Thursday of the month. 
Yeah. We so come in. Like 10 yep. to 11. Yeah. So no, I think I have it for 1 o'clock. You change that to 10. Huh? Can you change it to 10? Apparently. Thank Justin tells me what to do. When it, that's not until after Christmas, right? No, I have it for the 14th. Oh, no, that's that's a site inspection, property oh. inspection. Yeah. I, can't. I guess they won't change that. No. I can't do that. Okay, but anyway, obviously it's not going to be, we'll come up with an easy Right, and, we'll and I think it's, I mean, I definitely don't see it increasing the budget at all. No, um, no, no, yeah, we're just... So whatever we'll number you're out carrying, his numbers will come up with we'll right. three of you. Right. And I think if you run that right. yeah, through Justin and figure yeah. out what it's been in the past, I don't see think it's going to be a problem at all. Right. It's 20. So for you guys, it's right, an hourly rate of 20 hours, but then we get into the issue with Krista. Right. Which that can you run it? Too. Can you do like hourly in or is that uh everybody I either stipend or everybody? I think so. So I account with a maybe an average of 72 hours a year at the most. Most. Um, and I think you can split it. Oh, I haven't heard of anything saying that you can't. Well, who would we ask that question? question. Sometimes you just don't ask. <laughs> I don't have a problem with that. And I'm not so sure we shouldn't change it to, well, and if it works easier to do a stipend based on Justin's hours, I'm okay with that. I mean, I don't care. I, it's, I know. It's like, I never felt well. Right? Yeah. I mean, it's, in theory, Chris is not going to. Whatever works for Krista, basically. I would presume Chris is not going to be doing field work, site inspections, unless one of them isn't available or right. an alternate. And she'd be helping me more with like the mapping and yeah. right. clean up and type of stuff. She's very good at that. Story. Yeah. Yeah. Story. yeah, I picked up on that quickly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Krista. Right, because we don't want Krista pulled away from her day to day to do listener work, right? That's not our intention, is it? Or is it? Well, we talked to Kim about that to ask Kim if we he felt we didn't really ask Kim about that though. Well, we kind of did, and she didn't think it was an issue because she said what she does now doesn't take away from it. But she's gonna get paid double for right. What she should, well, she should not. But we can't. No, right. you can't do that. See, she right. Forty hours we trip into a whole different right. No, but I mean if she got a stipend. Well, that, that's why I'm that's what I'm saying. Stipend stipend the, the stipend in the addition stipend to it wouldn't matter when she did it. Right. right. Yeah, but right. she shouldn't be well, doing it. Yeah, it does matter if he's yes. getting the siphon work and then working hourly during the day. Right. Like, be like that. he would be getting double paid. And I don't and want her to lose the, the money she's making from yeah. the town yeah. to be a Absolutely. Listener. Yeah, I agree. So, so I know, it could be what tricky. we're going to have to figure out. Oh, good. There goes the legal bill again. Is <laughs> We have to have a chat with our lawyer is how we handle this. Who is the town lawyer? Why? Why do you need to talk to the lawyer about this? Well, find out what's legal. Right. Say that again, what's what? See if it's better for a stipend or for the by the hour with Chris. Or if she, she she Why would the lawyer want well, I don't know. I guess, okay. That's fine. Ask him. I, I don't know. I just think that sounds foolish to ask him that. But well, Chris, it's... you understand that you can't get paid twice for doing the same job? Right. Very good. Well, she's not going to be. We just determined that. How? Because she's going to be a lister. Right. And the, her lister work's going to have to be done outside of her working hours. Yeah. That doesn't happen, though. Right. That doesn't happen. That's the problem. Right. It's because she helps Justin. Oh, she's that. doing it now? Yeah, she's yeah. doing it now. Which oh. and she's been helping Justin with the mapping. And she did an amazing job on the mapping for yes. us. It was incredible how good a job she did. So that's why her name came up as helping with the Lister stuff. Oh, got it. That's how it came up. But you can't pay somebody twice for the same job. Right. 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 In any way, shape, or form. Not as a stipend or not as an hourly rate. Right. I think it's a lot. I don't, I think it's Well, illegal. the thing is, she's earning more now than she probably would let her earn as a Lister. Right. Just let like, oh, Susan that, talk to the lawyer. That's yeah. why I don't want her to. To lose that, right? I don't want her to make less money right. when she's <laughs> making doing good. more work. <laughs> right? She'd right. be losing money and doing more work. Right? Probably. Thank Probably. you, Krista. <laughs> Isn't that the best way? <laughs> no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame you. Right. I don't blame you. Eventually, the decisions I make. That's right. my life. That's for sure. <laughs> right. Okay, so let me. All right, so we we know we know we have an issue, and it is one of those conundrums. Um, it really is chastity, the kind of thing that. Um, that that the lawyers who deal with personnel stuff can say, 
here's here's how you can do it, or it's impossible to do it. But there's got to be. They gotta figure There's got to be other towns that deal with that type of stuff, though, too, I feel like. I don't think, I don't know of any other towns that have a list of uh, assistant. I do. Oh. In Berkshire, um, they have an assistant town clerk and treasurer and an assistant lister, because she can't be the lister. Um, so they put 14 hours towards assistant clerk and seven hours towards lister which was a concept that Kim had mentioned had been come up before, but maybe was trying to stay away from more, trying to keep but it But Chris is 40 hours, isn't she? Right. Yeah, so there, there's no more hours of the day without going into overtime. Right. Um, do you have any comments on it, Krista? I don't know. I, I'm fine with a stipend if that's the way. Well, I don't, think we're, there, I don't think we're there yet. Then on... Um, that if you do take a stipend, would you be willing to do some of your well the lesser hours outside of your 40 hours? Like yeah, I do that with cleaning. Okay. So yeah. So, I, I you know I was there yeah. till quarter of five Friday night to you know clean down there where you guys are at right now. Right. So if we said maybe you did an hour a week of Lister um times that by an hourly wait rate and make that be the stipend and they have it. Yeah. But you would be, you would be doing the work you did for us for less money. I would still get my forty hours in, in my regular job. Right, but you wouldn't be able to do your listers work during your regular job. Unless she, well, and you, from what Kim says, hours extra. Or yeah, I mean all that work that you did for us. Hours. All that all uh, the work that you did for us. I don't want you to get paid less than what you got paid this year. I don't want you to get paid less next year. Well, she's ultimately going to be paid more because she's going to get a stipend. So she's doing more work. It's just, you're right, the hourly rate might be lower, but she's still getting more money. Okay. So you're willing to do that for less money? Outside of the 40 hours? No, you do. You keep your regular 40 hours, but then let's just say to make the math easy, then you figure you do a, uh, it's it's really the same situation as the cleaning. Say you figure, just to figure, an hour a week is lister stuff, and you do, you know, you stay after work one day a, a week or something, or whatever it builds up to be, to do the lister stuff, and and for that, you get a stipend. And just to be specific, the, the mapping that you did for us that we, that you did so well with, you wouldn't be able to do that during your 40 hours. Which is fine. That's up to you. And the mapping's not that hard, really. <laughs> two things on that. Um, Kim had mentioned that Krista was helping before as part of the assistant clerk as a team building type of thing, because there was so much behind. So all the departments working together to make one whole team, yada yada. Um <laughs> then one hour a week, 52 weeks a year is $1,040. So that'd be equivalent stipend. And $1,400. Well, $1,040. 1040 So you figure the other listers do 52 hours a year? Probably more. I figured 72 for them. Well, you have the stipend as a, a $1,600. No hourly rate or mileage. That was, that was your option number three. That's a different number, obviously. Different number than the 1040. The the 1040 the based on just Krista's one hour a week new concept outside of this email. The 1600 stipend I'll give you my address. was the average hours based on the work that you folks would perform as full-time listeners, which would be, which is 80 hours. So that 1600 is a eight hour overage estimate yearly. So based on- I guess the percentage is I do a lot more than an hour a week. I definitely am due for a pay raise. That's why the planning commission doesn't get paid. Because it's a, it's a, we're the only one. It's a volunteer service. So is this. 
They're DRB, not making any money. DRB is a voluntary service. Still, they don't get paid. That's what I get paid. A stipend well, seven hundred and fifty bucks. I know. I'll swap with you. I'm right back. Somewhere somebody gets twenty five hundred dollars a year. Mm -hmm. I think not so. Oh God, no. They do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, oh, I always look at it as a volunteer service anyway. So I'm not here to yeah. do it for the money. I don't care what. So here's what we need is is a, we've got first appointed right about that. Then we need a motion to pay. Two of the listers at twenty dollars an hour, um, and that with Crystal we will sort out a stipend of. You want to give me a number now, or just trust that we'll fill it in when you figure out what it should be. I think you need to ask somebody smarter than us about paying her. Okay, I agree. I, 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 think I do. Right. Not, so. Okay, yeah. and we just don't want to do something wrong. All right, exactly. And I don't want to see. And I don't want to see her get in trouble. Either. And I don't. I mean, the thing is, is there's so much that's needed during the day, right, for Krista to work on that's Lister stuff to help Justin with the math. Now, if she was to keep track of that and it's make up her other us, whatever she is, assistant town clerk she stuff. Crazy I mean, it's yeah, but it. That's when ninety percent of the work is needed. Is when Justin needs on Thursday. I mean, she needs something. Well, I, it's okay. not fair that she makes less money to work. No, what exactly. her job is. She needs to earn what she's earning now. Right. Two things. And that can be a stipend at the end of the year. Yes. Yeah. Or six months. Or right. Or right. Twice but a no, year. how does she separate the two? She's just working keep track of her time. Right. Mm -hmm. what? Just wait. Just now. wait. Just, guys, wait. Let Justin. No, we're with working with the town clerk and assistant. The listers naturally have a. Uh, relationship anyway so we have to look at pttrs and different things errors that usually would go with them so part of what she does as assistant town clerk is a little bit of list of work just okay. as a team anyway right yeah you... and the only other thing i was going to say is my pay i get paid less as a board clerk than i do as an assessor mm -hmm. so just kind of put that out there too right right Which is my choice but yeah I mean, it's it. We can just make it work. I think everybody's trying to make it too complicated. I think but you got to make sure you're doing it legally. Well, yeah. I'll make sure we're sure legally. Yeah. yeah, but I think if Chris is on board, Kim is on board, and we figure it out, it, we shouldn't make it so complicated. I don't think you can mix the two, but could you take the thousand forty dollars and put it in her salary? No, no, because that would be overtime. No, like give like a fifty cent raise or. a... Oh, I see what you're saying. Oh, I see what you're saying. Not a raise, but right, right, right. Uh, I think that would have to go. But well, Savannah, I thought of that too. What the problem is, is when I do the cleaning, that does run into overtime sometimes. And they pay you overtime to do the cleaning? Yes. Because I couldn't find a cleaner and I told them I would do it and they couldn't figure out the pay. So. Yes, yes, question. Question. She never answered you, did she? Because 50 cents an hour is $1,040. Okay. <clears throat> she That's mentioned it's relevant or related yeah. to yeah. Mark, because Mark gets some type of stipend in addition to his hourly. Currently, I don't know if that's an executive session type of thing. Brian also gets a stipend as being the warden, the fire oh. warden. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Obviously... All right, we, we've run around the circle as much as we can. Right, right. right. And we'll need to come up with a solution. Yeah. We know the solution we want to get to right. is getting more money to Crystal. Right. Because she's doing and less, it. And lastly, too. <laughs> oh, that's right. So you're already here for the money. So you do need a motion to pay these two listers at a rate of $20. So I haven't earned that in 30 years. For this year, right? <laughs> And then we'll like readdress it next next year. Well, that's right. Figure out when you've got yeah. time is easier. Well, when we have what background is. to what we need, what right. we want right. a history. Okay. We need a history, right? Okay, Chas. Chas, you good with it? Yep. Okay. All in favor of paying these two listers twenty dollars an hour, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. And we'll figure out how to how to yeah. deal with the first. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. Yes. I just want to I recommend that we, we report hours quarterly. That would give us another reporting right before town meeting, oh, elections. Okay. And... okay. Okay, we'll hand them in this week. I can't make it Wednesday tomorrow. 
Um, is Thursday the last time we're going to meet before the end of the year? Uh, I'll see you Thursday at 1, and then we have a 28th. Okay, Thursday at 1. I'll call him John. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have a good night. <laughs> you keep track of the violence, and the other one keep track of where you go. Well, we finally figured out how to work that out because Leslie gets very car sick, so Justin rides and yes. Leslie rides. And that's all. Okay. Yeah. See you later. Bye. 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 On to the interlocal agreement. Okay, interlocal agreement. So on number five for GMA TV, interlocal agreement for assessor. Um, okay. Johnson Select Board officially approved last night and signed. Okay. The addition of the town of Berkshire. Yeah, right. The town of Berkshire. Five. I think we, we've already approved it. We just have to sign it, right? We sometimes, yeah, 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 and there is a change um, going from $25 administration fee to $30. Yeah, um, so it's just approved the a motion to approve the revised into local to add Berkshire with the pay period increase. There is also a motion written out on that. If you wanted to read off that. Ah, there we go. A motion to approve the interlocal agreement by and between the towns of Johnson, Hyde Park, St. George, and Berkshire for shared assessor services, serving the four municipalities for the term beginning on the date of fourth town's signing of this agreement through June 30th, 2024, Unless extended in writing by all parties. So we need a, okay. And to accept the change of twenty five dollars to thirty dollars. And okay, and to accept the change from twenty five dollars to thirty dollars per pay period. I'll make that motion. Second. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Francesca, go. No, I'm here. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You hear us? Yeah. yeah we'll I did. Yeah. I'm good. Thank you, folks. Okay. Always more money. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. Okay, all right. The Centerville Road and Brook Road project completion status. Well, I'm going to recommend that we would hold 10% until they deal with the dip in the punch. The, the, the dip is impacting the clouds, making it this. Serving over to yeah. <laughs> What do you think, Rolling? You got to slow down. That's not even slowing down. That I know it, but it's not going to be done until no, that's spring. Right. Yeah, next spring. Going so until spring. You're right. going to have to get used to it. You're going to have to slow down in next spring because that's when it's going to be done. I'll have to do something to figure it out. <clears throat> but sure to hell, I don't even know if there's any blacktop places open now. I think they're all closed. Right, but she's saying withhold 10%. Well, yeah, we can hold 10%. Yeah, yeah. That's, so the, that's, come back. that's so a no brainer. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So just need a motion to hold the 10%. We'll hold the 10% on the Centerville Road until it's yeah. completed the right way with no dip. No dip. I'll second that. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, all, all, all in favor of uh, withholding the 10%. I don't know. I don't know if 10 percent is enough. <laughs> well, that's sort of the normal. <laughs> um, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 You, think, you think it's bad Anybody now? Standing? You think it's bad now? Wait until after January. 
Financial assistance engineering planning in advance. Okay. We got the scoping grant. We've already been through this. We know we're doing it. Now what we need is you got to need a motion to authorize me to sign the, the grant application. So it we'll, allows LCPC to mandate. Yep. That's what I'm saying. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Anybody who's standing? Okay, get through that part. All right. Town administrator and executive. About minutes. We'll move for a second here. Okay. All right. Here we go. Thank you. We're going to go in executive. Said, well, let's yeah, but let's do the warrants and the minutes and that stuff and get that. Yeah, I got one thing before we go in there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's start on start on some warrants. We'll be crashing silence for a while. Matt, it's in during the during the meeting. Hey, Matt, we're just going through warrants right now. Not sure my cell phone service is good enough to run it, but we can hear you. That's a good start. I helped the recreation budget for you. You did what? You, you talked about it? No, we haven't. I thought, I don't think it's just like, yeah, there it is. It's simple. You injected it. <laughs> <laughs> just, I guess, just, uh, just so I speak loud enough to everyone here, I know I've talked to Ron a little bit about it. The generator does have, so I'm, I'm guessing it will come from either reserve funds or whatever, but we do know that we have a small capital expense with the generators. I think we have a, a estimate for it to be repaired is like 1700 but uh, we're holding off in case we can end up running power up there, and then hopefully we'll find funds to figure out power instead of fixing a generator that's temporary. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And people are looking at warrants right now. Got to have a North Hyde Park Eden renovation thing. Guys, yeah, so I got to make a phone call. Give me a minute. Yep. 
Are we in executive now? Or are we in the meeting? No, we're just we're finishing up warrants, and um, I want to I want to see about getting the Northside Park Eden bathroom renovation ARPA funds approved. Okay. We got the oh, with Chaplin had got the estimate from. Uh, <laughs> I like I love Chas. I love I love the way Brett Landfair comes up and sharing your contacts. <laughs> you want? First time I got it, I went. I went to look at it. Dude, Landfear. Okay. Oh, dude. Oh, yes, I do have him in there as dude. Sorry. <laughs> no, no. So I went. That's great. And I said, I love it. Okay. Um, called him that forever. Ever since he was in high school with my brother. Is Brent the main person to contact at Northside Park, or are there other people? He's really the best. Can you witness of Savannah? Oh, yeah. You didn't see it, just watch the whole play. <laughs> okay. No, no, yeah. Oh, under you. Yeah. 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 Okay, we got the, if the warrants are signed, we need a motion to approve the warrants. I'll motion to approve the warrants. Second. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. This oh, is aye. 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 Anybody aye. opposed? Anybody abstaining? Yes, you can I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna abstain just because I didn't get a chance to look at them. So right, you guys can stop and sign them if you want or whatever. Okay. Um, out of the uh, out of the meeting up with um, with Northside Park and Eden last week, uh, came the conversation up about the um, the renovation of the of the bathrooms up there, and. Um, and talking with Brent, and we sort of initially had, had just because it was the fire stations and had the North Hyde Park that they wanted to do connected with Hyde Park. Hyde Park, I'm learning, is uh, is a, uh, and I'll get to that one in a minute, but anyway, I think we need to separate them. And Brent, since it had been a few months, he tracked everybody down since the work probably now will, it might get done in the middle of the winter. But the um, the total construction cost is, uh, and we have copies of it of it from uh, from Brent here, fifty six thousand eight hundred twenty five dollars. Um, and that renovates the two bathrooms, makes one of them ADA uh, with a shower, a new bathroom without a shower, the electric and fire alarm upgrades, um, and just taking care of all of that. So um, I, this is a this is a perfect ARPA project. Um, I asked Eden if they had any ARPA money left. They don't have any ARPA money left. Um, they've committed all their money, but what we may be getting back, I I would recommend we just go ahead and, and commit the money since it's not going to happen for a while. But what may happen is they found a grant to cover the air packs. So, and we had already sent in our $33,000 check. We are probably getting $33,000 back. So, it's a hundred percent grant. Hmm? It's a hundred percent grant. That's, that's, um, <laughs> somebody out there, knows, it's like, I'm, I'm not going to argue with it. Wow. So anyway, so we, so we have money coming back, but we also have the ARPA money, but that may, that may allow Eden to pay for some of this. But I think I I feel like it's just that it doesn't need an action. But when we're looking at the ARPA funds, let's make it safe and do you know sixty thousand dollars because who knows what goes over that goes to the North Hyde Park renovation. The uh, when they started and uh, Brent is doing some work with Ryan now on the 
because you and you know this has been okay. Well, this is what I've got right now. Okay, right. Uh, Ryan called me the other night. Yeah. And we we and I've been out there too to try to get some answers to this building, and it just ain't coming back to me yeah. and stuff. So Ryan called me the other night, and we got this person that does this stuff. It's kind of like, like, like a consultant who'll get all the prices. And I don't know how Brent got this, but he, he I know how he got plumbing and heating, but he's yeah. got the electrical and he's got all these other prices. It's going to be a person to get all these prices for us. And it's going to cost the town in the long run about three grand right. to right. to get this. I don't know if Brent talked to you about yeah. it yeah. Yeah. a lot, but I want to bring it up to you board members. Yeah. And I don't know if we should have a vote on that or... Or, you know, I, I think just as long as we know we're doing it, because one of the things when they start looking at, at the age of that building, and, and again, what this guy who comes in and can assess and sort of will end up with three options, it's scared what you can do, but it may end up making sense long term to tear that money down and go looking for federal money, to look for the federal money first, and then to redo the fire station to build it as to what it would need to be today. Because it may not make sense to invest much money in the current building. Well, like well, Brent, um, Ryan and I were talking about, and the guy that they got, we're supposed to be at five o'clock at the North Height Fire Fire Station on December twenty first. So if anybody wants to come, okay. you know, everything anybody wants to come, yep. it's five o'clock December twenty first. Okay, at the North Height Fire Fire Station. Now, <clears throat> this guy. And I think he's got a pretty good point after all the people I've talked to. His steel is outrageous. Steel is sky high. So why not put that addition down there to the high park fire at the station back into wood, build it in wood? And it makes a lot more sense and it would be a lot cheaper. Well, again, again, I think one of the things he's going to look at, but looking at and evaluating that entire building. It, it might make sense to go to the feds and say, you know, this is way outdated and we need a whole new building and do the whole thing from scratch and have what we really need. And I think that's one of the things you look at. So they'll come back and say, here, here are your different options and here are the different costs and we can, we can plan, we can come up with a plan for the, for there. Um, North High Park's easy because we know, that, you know, we know what they need. So, and of course, that's obviously much more building. <laughs> and, and, and Kevin Jones, I've been talking to Kevin Jones. He works for that CC down here. Yeah. Erectors. And he said the price of steel right now is going to scare you guys. Yeah. Price of steel is going to scare you. So, you know, price of if anybody prices. wants to come to the meeting. Okay. We got it. We got it. We'll list it right. 21st. What was it? Five o'clock? Five o'clock. Yeah. Okay. Price everything is scared, but I think it, it was a good idea to Yes. No, you know, no, spend a little money to get somebody that does it for a business and here's what's here's I what's mean, Brian's on. busy with what he's doing. Brent's busy with what he's doing. Yeah. Well, I guess you don't answer. You're right. You only got so much time to sort of chase people down. So it's okay. <laughs> oh, okay. The other well, let me see. Um the, with the other ARPA funding, the Johnson Hyde Park scanners, the cell cell signal booster. <laughs> um, and this is in Jen's um, memo to us. The cell signal booster is the um, scanner was a compensation. <clears throat> Hyde Park has agreed to purchase a scanner and it is purchased. It's sitting in Johnson now. Um, Jen would like to know where those funds are supposed to come from for that twenty one fifty, and she recommended ARPA. Yeah, but use that motion, and then in her step in her finance memo, my cell signal booster. Then we considered making a motion to purchase two cell signal boosters with ARPA funds with a project project not to exceed forty five hundred. And she gives the explanation about that. Yeah, you know, started in her. Yeah, and then the investment was part of the same right. on a planning memo. We make a motion to award a percent of recognition for effort. Um, 
Retur return on investment was seventeen thousand five hundred and sixty and thirty cents. So the first one is a scanner. So I make the motion to use our funds for that. Second. Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. Chauncey, you get anything? Sorry, I was muted. Yes, I said I. I apologize. Then we go to the it's so hard for me to say two cell signal boosters. Two cell signal. Which is again we've got some some dead spots in town when the when the crews are out there, so really not good to have that. What's that? I want to put a two a cell booster on. Um, I'll tell you what, here. I went through that with that narrow band. I spent 10 grand over there in Marshall and I was up there. We put the cell tower up there by Bruce. There was um, up on where the round barn is. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I spent $10,000 to put that booster up there. When they went in with that narrow band, that's what happens. And I'm telling you, you're probably not going to get no better reception you got right now because we didn't get no better. I ain't got no, we didn't have no reception up in Sterling. We didn't have nothing up in the different places. And so we, they talked us into a Burlington communications, talked me into putting a um, booster up there to Bruce Payne's. And it never, it never worked. Hello? Yes. I think the proposition, I know I live before the work until you do it. I wouldn't do it. It doesn't make any sense. He's right. It doesn't, they don't work. Huh. I mean, I can tell you just from personal experience, uh, like, well, you know, Garfield, there's no yeah, service. AT&T tries to convince you to get cell boosters, right? We did it one time. It didn't make a difference. We sent it back. Do we have Wi-Fi for the guard? I think so, yeah. Because I just have, like like you just said, if I don't, if I'm not on my Wi Fi at home, this power was out, we don't have cell phone service. Yeah. And so I just use my Wi Fi for yeah. my phone all the time. Right. Yeah. I stay connected to that. Same thing. So if there's right. anything on the Wi Fi here, they're Wi Fi. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can get Wi Fi calling here. Yeah, I'm sure they can out there too. Well, that's an interesting. <clears throat> so we, we want to, Chastity, what's your thoughts? On the booster? Yeah. yeah. Matt, there too. Yeah, Matt's up there. No, we lost Matt, I think. I was lost Matt. Okay. <clears throat> you think they work? We got, we got several votes experiences here that they don't work. I've never used one, so I don't have an opinion. I live in the big city, you know, I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> what do you think, Justin? You're here. My parents had a cell phone booster once. Um, now and then we got one bar, usually nothing, but it's a very small in the home on your bookshelf type of booster. Right. And that was years ago. Right. What do you get? Do you? Are you on Wi Fi here? Do you get good service or do you not yeah. connect to this? And you're... I haven't had any issues. And I don't usually get issues until I head out towards North Hyde Park. And I start, but it's also beginning a lot better. Like, I haven't paid attention too much in this area because it's usually pretty reliable. But on the way here, like in Barton and Roll and different places where it used to be dead zones, I'm now getting 4G, two or three bars. And it's been increasing pretty steadily over the last few years, in my opinion. So. Uh, compared to when I was a teenager, everything was a dead zone except for McDonald's, pretty much. So, <laughs> I don't know now. Let me let's let's just let's just put this one on hold and, and let's just talk with them and see what they, you know, 
So if it doesn't work, will you come take them back and give us back our money? Right. <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, can they give you like a trial period? Yeah. Like you tried it for like X amount of days, would they allow you? Yeah, and they don't use it. Well, they guarantee me it'll work. Right. Well, I didn't go that route. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> guarantee that they ain't gonna. I can tell you, the guarantee was no good. <laughs> What? I said they don't use CDs anymore in drugs. Radios got the same problem with them. Okay. Yeah, same problem. That makes sense. If you're down in yeah. down there by the basketball court up yeah. here by your place, <laughs> nothing. Then nothing. nothing. Yeah, see, I don't think this is going to work for them because there's still there's no cell service out through there. I mean, they make it a bar if you're up by the by the up by Dana's place. Yeah. And then if you're headed out toward the Anagraphic Road between um, Perry Perry's and uh, well, right at the end, where you go towards Cobra Road Farm, right at the end, you might get a bar through there. But everything else is we, dead. We were we were right there at Davis Hill. Yeah. When I was helping Eddie. Yeah. And, and it was dead. Yeah. Right up on the spot up Perfect. there, and then you can't get it down the hill yeah. until you get like into more stone. Right. You get it again. So yeah. let's just. I don't think. Well, let's just, let's just have a further conversation about. It. I mean, you. I think our area is just too rural. Might be better off getting paid. Well. well what needed to be done up there it didn't get done. Right. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I okay. mean, they shot that down. I know they did. <laughs> I wish they had. Well, hard, that's, but... you know, because of reasons like this, but if they had that tower up there, yeah. uh, or antenna on that cell tower, yes. that's, very cool. yeah. that's, that's what it needs to be brought up again. Yes. Yeah, that person. Yeah. 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 So the best answer would be that. I think the taxpayers on there shot that. But um, no, I mean, what a percentage of recognition. <laughs> no, but it's you know we yeah. we rely on these things a lot. We do. I think most people have kind of put it in the same category. You'd have, you'd have told me that twenty years ago. I would have said no. Right. <laughs> right, Rolly. No, it's true. So true. Maybe yeah. it needs to be brought up again what was brought up last time and see because probably 90% of the people up there have got phones now. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much everybody except other blue that everybody thought that's what it was going to look like. It didn't look like that. You right. probably don't. You had a cell phone coverage your place, did you? I would get on the roof today. Get on the roof. <laughs> don't fall off. Don't fall off. Um, what's next? You want to talk about the panel? Well, what, no, not really didn't say it. Um, <laughs> this is this is the child care contribution that we need to decide. Um, it's with the new law what we want to do. And you know what? I take that and hold until we're all here, okay. and then we might get Jen on the phone with us as well. Okay. Okay. Oh. Get some more info. It's a way to get through the meeting. Okay. Website accessibility discussion. No, do we still have this one? Investment. Oh, and investment. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I thought we just did automatically done that and she automatically got it. I thought so too. Yeah. Each time. Yeah, I thought, I thought so. Yeah. Yeah, I would I would have thought that's what we should have done it if we didn't do it. That we should do it every time. No. Yeah, we should have done it all period. period. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what we did. So you can tell her that it's already done. It's done, period. Okay, so that motion was supposed to last yeah. while she was here from mm -hmm. women's history. Yeah, until we said no more. Yeah. yeah. You're banned. It's not like you keeps doing or if we lose money and she has to pay us. <laughs> <laughs> until you mess up with yours. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, now, okay, oh, the Moyle County Lease Update. Okay, ladies, come on up. That's you, I'm just, I'm just the email where I didn't know nothing. <laughs> so I don't have much of an update. Okay. I sent an email to both of you ladies. I don't know if you received it and if you talked to Betsy about going for a tour. I replied back that those dates or some some of I think we should probably do it before our meeting. Jeez. Well maybe I should check that because I didn't get it. Oh. I wasn't included. 
Oh, well, there's there's one from Justin in here. That's not, there goes in my drink now. On Thursday, the 27th, I said I could do either the 12th or the 15th. I think we should do it before our 12 18 meeting. Hmm. All my sure. <laughs> 9 48 a.m. Okay. I'll wear one. Okay. All right. That's all right. Uh, well, that only leaves. The twelfth was today, so that right. only leaves this Friday. Right. Yeah, because she can do ten or eleven o'clock on today, the fifteenth through the twenty. So now we maybe are. Friday ten o'clock. No, no. Right, you guys can go out. I'm like, okay, right. Okay, so you want to do this Friday? Yeah. 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 I'll meet you there. That's not good. It's pretty much all yeah, 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 for you at the camps. Okay. And I put a little update in the newsletter, the draft newsletter. So that's that, but otherwise. That's great. And then we have Monday meeting. Yes, Monday meeting here. I will be here. Yeah. Oh, do you folks like that agenda? Any changes to it? I thought it was good. I figured if anything new came up, we just talk about it at a meeting. Let me distribute it, post it, all the stuff. Yes, please, do all the things. <laughs> right, all the magic things he has to do. Okay. <laughs> Will you be here Monday? No. Come on. Maybe remotely. I don't think I have any. Remotely is fine. I'm not going to take any notes, huh. honestly. So if you're on there, that's right. cool. And she's proven to be pretty OK. <laughs> <laughs> She did her thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Okay, okay. Nice. awesome. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. you. Are they still known as the Loyal Kennels? Yeah. yeah, they are. Thank you. Perfect. Good okay. Friday. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Then we can, can we approve the minutes and then, and then you guys, let's see, you brought up that. You don't need. Before we go into executive session, do you have anything else? No, that's Sorry, what I have. Right, right. And I have a newsletter for open session. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. See the newsletter. Be right back. You going to executive session? Uh, sure. Like we need to approve the minutes. We need to approve the minutes. Second. Okay. <laughs> Savannah first. Can I approve the minutes? I know. Oh. Yeah. Perfect. Who better? <laughs> I, I did a great job. I did a great job. Um, all those in favor of approving them, let's see. We got the 12, 1128 and 12, 5. Right. And the special meeting. I just want to get All in favor, wait a second. Signify by saying aye. I think Chancellor. Uh, anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. Yeah. Okay. And you see, here's the rough cut and the, and the high part monthly newsletter. I like it. Yeah. Do you like the font or do you think that's too busy? I like your When you said that now, I'm like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, it makes people, well, it's, it's, di it's different, so people pay attention to it. You know, let's try it. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't think there's any copyright issues. I'm just going off of Google and what do they have on there and just leave it. And yeah. Some pictures. Let's Oh my Please use the leash. Oh my so, um, so, did you hear anything from highway department? No, I haven't. But they've been so busy. They're like, Susan, don't bother them. So, we're going to start renting Mark out because literally all over the state is after him about the brine. Yeah, there we go. It's great. 
I don't know if I can use the speed limit sign. I might be totally out of line here, but can we make a suggestion on the ARPA money? I know we have more thoughts on we need to spend, but the signage for all the speed limit, we were talking about how we're going to pay for that. Mm -hmm. I can't leave some ARPA money for the speed limit signs. Yeah, I can do it. Just that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think what we're going to do is actually come up with a whole bunch of little things. You know, and, and then okay, we have to go. Oh, we're about ready to go, and then you got to print some stuff out, right? Yeah. Okay. So, so you're a busy man. He is. I know. He's all over the place. Today. Well, okay. We're going to take. Tell you what's going on. Just as soon as I get. Okay. Okay. Let's see. We're going to take a break. Well, let's go into executive session. Yeah. And then when we come out and the GMA TV will still want to be around for the recording aspect. Right. Okay. Right. Okay, so motion go into executive session. I make a motion. Second. Okay. Am motion. I included? Yeah, yeah. yes. Yep. Yeah, you may include it. All in favor is all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody abstaining? Okay, now there's gonna be a, a break. Well, Justin has to copy some. The executive session was exited at 8.22 p.m. with a motion by Susan and seconded by Chastity. First motion is to approve the letter of hire from Mark French as Will Foreman as amended, seconded by Matt. The second motion is motion to approve the motion to approve Susan Bartlett to sign the letter of hire for Brent Sheets as town administrator with the wording change of relocation seconded by Roland. And then we have a motion, third motion by Savannah Droney to increase Jen Trico's first return on investment incentive from 1% to 3% and to apply that moving forward, seconded by Matt. Then a motion to adjourn by Susan, seconded by Matt at 8.26 p.m. Okay. Now we're done.